fractures. Uh, as we know, as we have to start with astrology, as we all know, the pelvis is uh, composed of mainly seven bones. But the seven bones is two iliac bones, two pubic bones, and two scale bones, and the sacrum. This is will do the configuration of the ring, what we call the pelvic ring. This is the, the, the ring will do the function of the uh, of the pelvis. Which is protection of the internal organ, mainly, and transmission of weight from the body to the lower limb for the act of walking and pulsion of the walk. Uh, some sort of uh, importance ligaments in this entity uh, is the iliolumbar and sacroiliac. It will uh, contribute mainly to the stability of the pelvic ring. Any fracture in the pelvic ring with associated this ligament may, may, may part of severe pelvic fracture. You can notice the anterior sacroiliac, the posterior long posterior sacroiliac, and the short posterior sacroiliac, and the sacroiliac ligaments uh, uh, up with the symphysial pupus and symphysial uh, ligaments. This all ligaments will contribute to the integrity of the pelvic ring. So, what is the importance of the pelvic? The pelvic ring or the pelvic fractures, the main thing we have to take in consideration is the presence of the internal organ. And the most important thing is the vessels around the pelvis. You have the internal common internal iliac vessels and the, the venous plexuses around the, the, the pelvis. So any fracture in the, in the pelvis will lead to uh, disruption of this. Um, uh, this vascular, the, this vascular elements that will lead to bleeding, intraperitoneal or intraperitoneal bleeding. So the uh, the type of injury it will mask or it will uh, act to the uh, 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 output of the pelvis fracture. We have low energy versus high energy trauma. In low energy trauma, we have a, maybe we have a fracture in the pelvis, isolated pelvic fracture, either tractional or other side or other side. It will not disintegrate the ring of the pelvis. So most commonly, what we are afraid of, or what we have to take consideration of, is high energy trauma, like a road traffic accident, falling from height, that will lead to uh, uh, more morbidity and mortality of this pelvis fracture. As we all know, that as we, as we told before, the hemodynamic stability of the patient is the most important one. We will treat the patient as a whole. We are not treating just the fracture. We are part of the human body, so we have to consider that all we, that we are thinking about is the human life, life, limb, wound, and then the last thing is the fracture. A soft tissue injury around the fracture, the blood is one of uh, the uh, most commonly injured. That's one uh, severely injured is the urethra, the base urethra. Uh, when there is a fracture in the pelvis, the, there will be disruption of, uh, of the base urethra because the prostate is static and uh, is static. This area is mobile. It is easy to be injured. This membranous is the a common part of be fractured. The rectum, the neurological, the, the uh, lumbar or sacral plexuses, the, the sympathetic and parasympathetic chains. So when we do, uh, when we have any patient with pelvis fracture, you can do uh, an X-ray. With the X-ray, you have to know the normal anatomy or the normal configuration. It is a sacroiliac joint. Here is the iliopectineal line, here is the iliopectineal uh, uh, line, and the anterior and posterior part of the uh, astabulum, the symphysis pupus, uh, and the uh, ilium, and the ischium, and the uh, uh, pubic uh, uh, Usually, uh, in the past, we have to do six views for x ray to with any patient with suspected pelvic fracture. We have the analytic view, we have the normal AP, the analytic view, the outlet view, the um, uh, internal uh, 45 degree uh, oblique on the sides, on the in, uh, right and the left side. We call the gelatin view. This is used usually to give the entity or the hallmark of disease. In the prevention or on the invention of the scan, we can go to every side of the pelvis without the use of multiple scan and um, or multiple cuts or multiple views of the x-ray usually we go for ct scan
So we now want to talk about the isolated building fracture. Uh, the first one is we call it avalogen fracture. The avalogen fracture, um, usually uh, we have, according to the site of the fracture, we can say what's, what kind of ligaments. The avalogen, there is a ligament or, or tendon or muscle attached to this type of fracture. Like this one, the anterior sphere, it's fine. The insertion of or the origin of the uh, sartorius. Uh, the anterior inferior leg spine here, the origin of the reflected hub of the reflected head of the rectus femoris, the uh, origin of the sculptability or the, uh, the insertion or the origin of the uh, hamstring tendons. Sometimes there's a direct fracture or uh, the fracture of the uh, ilium itself, or fracture of the um, it's a fracture. It's not some kind of direct fracture. Usually, this is not, it's not, not, not a very important fracture. There will be a pain for two weeks for, uh, for one month. Then after one, it will be normal, nothing to be done for them. Um, sometimes there's a stress fracture, and I, we saw it mostly then more than the stress fracture. We saw it, so, so it in patients with uh, osteoporosis. We call it insufficiency fracture. Mainly in the pubic myofascial fractures, he falls from height, or a small, a small energy trauma, falling from height, that will increase, uh, that will elect the uh, sensory cubes fracture. Usually, the treatment choice is uh, a bit uh, or a bit rest for uh, two weeks, then gradual weight bearing and uh, energies. Now we will go for the pelvic fracture, and we can classify it, uh, so that the pelvic fracture according to the mechanism of injury. Uh, we have an anterior posterior compression uh, when there's a disruption of the symphysis with the disruption of the sacroiliac joint or fracture of the one side of the iliac or the uh, sacrum. We have the lateral compression and fracture, and we have the vertical shear. The first one, the anterior posterior compression, we have a force. That will lead, well, that is called the open book fracture, but then appears either the stasis of the pubic symphysis and the fracture of the pubic remi as the pubic sprung open. The posterior part of the sacroiliac elements are always strained. Uh, then we have the other classification with the lateral compression fracture. There is a transverse fracture, there's a fracture of the pubic remi with a, a compression fracture either on the sacrum. Or is the fracture of the iliac queen, or there's a fracture, or the, the hardest one is fractured on the contralateral uh, opening of the other uh, ilium. So uh, this fracture pattern is usually harmful or severe when it is usually uh, both pubic remi fracture with the uh, contralateral or opposite uh, ilium or iliac queen. Then we have the uh, uh, vertical shear fracture. This type of fracture usually uh, happens when one falls from a height. Usually, uh, when he falls from one height, if he landed on just one limb, when he landed on just one limb, there will be imbalance. You will notice this is the normal one. You notice this one, which is going upward. This is called vertical shear. You, uh, the, the hemipelvis, all the hemipelvis is disrupted and going upward in the hemipelvis. This is the harmful, or the most harmful type of pelvic fracture that may lead to a neurological and open fracture of this type of, of fracture. So, what is the management of any patient with pelvic fracture? Usually, we go as a patient as a whole. We go for APLS protocol, airway breathing. Circulation. The ATS protocol, we have primary survey, the airway breathing circulation, ABCD, and we have the secondary survey for to go. You have to secure, to secure the airway, the, the, the ventilation of the lungs. Then usually we give the patient two large core cannulas so that we can give him two liter normal, uh, two liter fluid, whatever, normal saline, linear lactate, to, uh, for the hemodynamic stability of the patient. For secondary survey, we examine for the patient pelvis and uh, assure that he, there's any, some kind of disruption of the pelvis or any, uh, 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 any movement of the pelvis. Usually we have three um, 
uh, three X-rays for any patient with multi-trauma patients. Usually we have the pelvis X-ray, we have the chest X-ray, and we have the C-spine lateral X-ray. These X-rays may assure we have a reversible comorbidities for the patient. Any patient with uh, chest pneumothorax, if we have, we know that they have pneumothorax, we can put a chest tube for him that will ensure uh, assure the reduction of mortality in these patients. Any patient with C-spine fracture or dislocation, if you put uh, 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 a neck collar, a rigid neck collar, assure the patient to move his head or neck, you will decrease the, uh, any, any further neurological deficits for him. Any patient with pelvic fracture, if you build, put a pelvic binder for him, you will you may decrease the uh, the bleeding from the pelvis. You you first from the upper the lower limb fractures. That anybody with a, a femur fracture will bleed from 1.5 to 2 liters blood blood close fracture. Any any person has a, has a tibia fracture. He will bleed from uh, 0.5 to 1 liter of blood. But any patient will bleed from the pelvis, he may bleed up to 6 liter of blood. So the first thing we have to make sure of patients with pelvic fracture is to control his, uh, his bleeding. And this one of the ways to control his bleeding is to fix the pelvis. This is the simplest way. The simplest way that is present all over the way, even in the street, you can uh, grab a towel and grab it around the hips and you wrap it uh, uh, around the head so that you control the bleeding and you control the hip. This is the usual one, the, the pelvic binder. And this is called the military trousers. Uh, this is uh, present in the military devices. Uh, this is a strap uh, with, uh, that can be filled with air. Any patient with multi trauma, they can uh, address him this kind of device. And this device, can the problem with this device, it may increase the risk of compartment syndrome. The other way of fixation, we have the external and the internal fixation. This external fixation can be usually put in for a temporary method until the stabilization of the patient, or can be put in for uh, a definitive treatment until the, United, uh, the, the union of the fracture, or we can go for internal fixation afterward, according to the, to the fracture pattern. Where is the fracture? We can put pit and screws, we can put sacroiliac screws, uh, according to the fracture pattern of the, of the uh, uh, this kind of the fracture. What is the complication of the fracture? Based of all, hemodynamic is taping. You have to check always the blood pressure. You have to continuously give the patient either a, a, a low blood, you can give him all the time um, uh, fluids. You, and sometimes we can do a laboratory for them so that we can ensure that there's a, a control of the bleeding peritoneum or retroperitoneum. The other risk factor of complication of the patient is they have we can increase the risk of the DVT. We can give him some kind of uh, uh, anticoagulation. Uh, there's an increased risk of septic nerve injury. Uh, one of the most common problems is the urogenital problem, the, the bladder injuries or the urethral injuries. And the most uh, commonly encountered uh, chronic pain of the sacroiliac uh, side uh, is part of this part of injuries, a complication of the fractures. Uh, now we will go to fracture of the stabulum. The stabulum is, uh, is part of the hip joint, so it is an interarticular fracture. As a golden rule, as we said before, any interarticular fracture, we have to assure the, uh, uh, the anatomical reduction, rigid fixation, and early rehabilitation. So the mechanism of, uh, hip, uh, of a stabulum fracture of the stabulum uh, usually is uh, Head of the female is driven into that into that stabulum. Either it's a blow from a side or if, uh, as a point from a high, or it is in, in uh, dashboard injuries where a blow in front of the knee usually driven the uh, stab the head of the stabulum in the posterior part. The stabulum is usually made of uh, 
the uh, three components of uh, the ischium, the ilium, and the pupus. We have the anterior uh, lip, the posterior lip, the roof, uh, the anterior column, the posterior column, uh, and as we saw, the, the roof of the stabulum. So when we classify the fracture of the stabulum, we classify them according to its side. Either it is anterior wall, posterior wall, posterior column, anterior column, and maybe there is a transverse, or there's a combination of this classification. We call it task classification. And its placement of this fracture is an element for open reduction internal fixation, as it is a joint and articular side, particularly is the site of osteoarthritis, secondary osteoarthritis. We do open reduction internal fixation. Uh, this is an example of uh, right hip or hip fracture dislocation. There's a fracture, there's a dislocation, central dislocation of the hip with a disruption of the uh, roof of the stabulum. If you can notice, there is a, um, a, a comminution or an extension to the, uh, to the ileum and also to the ischium and the bubis. Usually, you do seat scans for, for them. And according to the seat scan and its placement, we can assure the treatment and the way of treatment. The first of all, the first treatment option is the conservative treatment. Uh, and we have assured of the conservative treatment if there is a stabular fracture with minimal displacement in the weight bearing zone less than three millimeter. It's a fracture that does involve the superior medial weight bearing segment, roof of the stabulum, usually distal anterior column or a distal transverse fracture. Both column fracture that retain the ball and socket con uh, congruence uh, of the hip joint by virtually of the fracture line lying in the coronal plane and spacement being limited to an intact labrum. Fracture in the patient where close reduction seems feasible and patient with medical contraindication to, uh, to operative treatment, including local sepsis. Patient with that is elderly have a stabular fracture. If you do open reduction and fixation with them, the risk of APN and arthritis is high. So usually we uh, try to uh, preserve them for um, an open reduction in, uh, for a hip replacement in the future. Uh, the other way of treatment is the operative treatment. The operative treatment we do open reduction in fixation to ensure the reduction of the joint space and the joint line for fixation of the pelvis and the stabulum as shown here. So what is the complication? Uh, first of all, it's thrombosis, cytokine nerve injury, heterotropic bone, uh, fix, uh, bone formation. That's, uh, the heterotropic uh, bone formation is the calcification uh, uh, that is present outside of the bone. As is shown here, it's the present in the abductor's muscles, uh, it's present here in the anterior lateral part. The uh, avascular necrosis, uh, loss of joint movement stiffness, and the secondary osteoarthritis as a complication as shown in this uh, diagram, that is treated by uh, hip replacement surgeons. Uh, last part of this, um, uh, of this seminar is the sacrum and the coccygeal fracture. The sacral uh, uh, is present, as we all know, uh, from fused five uh, vertebrae uh, present on the back of the side. Usually, the um, mechanism of injury is a blow from behind or falling from the tail, uh, maybe fracture the sacrum or the coccyx, but staying the joint between them. We can classify the sacral fracture according to its present, either it's transverse, vertical, U shape, its shape, or L shape. It's usually associated with an disruption uh, uh, of the uh, nerve plexus or sacral plexuses and the sympathetic and parasympathetic, usually present with the uh, some kind of uro, uh, urogenital uh, uh, function or uh, sweetening code. Uh, the, other, the last one is the coccygeal fracture, usually from falling on the buttock. That will lead to a fracture in the coccyx. Uh, the coccyx is three to five uh, vertically fused together. Uh, usually, the treatment option is, the, uh, uh, is giving the patient analgesia uh, and uh, uh, we let him set on uh, something called donut set or rubber set, rubber ring. It is uh, empty from the inside and with a uh, cushion on the sides. That will decrease the pain on, on the hem. Afterward, um, um, uh, there's still he has complaining of pain. 
uh, we can uh, 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 we, uh, we can use local anesthetic uh, uh, the, the area with cortisone. The last option for them to do excision of. حدا يجاوبني حدا بيعرف مريض عنده كوكسيك بين إيش كوكسيك بين بميديكال تيرم شو نسميها عبد الله معاي حدا بيعرف إيش معنى الكوكسيك بين بدي اغطي آية معي آية اسماعيل؟ اه دكتور عارفة ايش معنى كوكسكتين؟ ايش نحكي لها كميديكال تير؟ كوكتين يا حكيم؟ لا دكتور كوكسيداينا مضبوط مين حكى؟ محمد حواتمه اه حواتمه طيب تمام هلا احنا هيك ممكن خلصنا السيمينار اولموست آه، العدد زي العدد الماضي نفس الشيء زيادة في أي سؤال فيه؟ الله يعافي عمركم. في سؤال في استفسار. دكتور السلايد اللي اللي قبله ايش ايش لا لا مش هذا في اللي هو الاوستيوثرايتس بس انا ما سالتك عنها اللي هي لا لا بال بالمحاضره اللي قبل. اه الاوستيوثرايتس. طيب استفسار كمان خليني ارجع لك عليها. معلش انا يعني سؤال نظري هو اه اسال اسال ما في مشكله ديجري اوف ريكومنديشن للهيب ريبليسمنت لانه ما كان مكتوب ريكومنديشن اوف وات؟ هيب ريبليسمنت الجوينت ريبليسمنت يعني متى متى بنعمل جوينت ريبليسمنت او ايش ال يعني متى يعني ايش السؤال؟ متى بنعمل جوينت ريبليسمنت ولا السؤال ديجري اوف ريكومنديشن لا هو عادة أي واحد بنعمل له ريبليسمنت للجوينت أو أي واحد عادة نحن بنروح على السيمبتوم فالمريض بيشكي من بين يوجوالي كونتينيوس ريجيولر كونتينيوس بين وي ادفايز هيم إذا كان طبعا فيت فور سيرجري وي ادفايز هيم ادفايز هيم فور سيرجري سيرجري بدنا نعمل ريبليسمنت لإلها هلا قديش الريكومنديشن إنه هل تو جو فور أو إيش في أي سيفيريتي أوف ذا جوينت سبيس أو سيفيريتي أوف أرثرايتس بتختلف من مريض لمريض يوجوالي اللي هو اللي بيتحكم في هذا الموضوع انه ايش اللي احنا ممكن نفيد المريض فيه هو الديجري اوف بين. الهيب ريبليسمنت سكسسفول ريت تبعها اولموست 98% الني ريبليسمنت سكسسفول ريت حوالي 92% مش كل مريض بنعمل عمليه بيكون كثير مبسوط. الاغلبيه بيكونوا مبسوطين الاغلبيه بعد فتره بحسوا بالفرق تبعهم بس عاده اللي بيستفيدوا منه فعليا هو البين. طبعا الرينج اوف موشن انا سكند ديجري. طبعا طبعا الليمبين بتختلف معهم الدايفيرستي اوف لايف بتختلف معهم بتمنى هلا بكون جاوبتك ولا لسه انت ما وصلت الموضوع الجزء عندي او عندك صح؟ لا لا تمام دكتور شكرا تمام ثاني دكتور لو سمحت اه بدي اسال عن التريتمنت تاع الكرونيك اوستيايتس بيوبس هلا هدول في اكثر من تريتمنت لهم ممكن نبلش بكونزرفاتيف تريتمنت لهم بانالجيزيا آه بعدين ممكن نعطي ستيرويد الانجكشن لهم اللاستنج ممكن نعمل ديسربشن لها دول غالبا بتيجي بالفيميل بالريبيتيف تروما لها مع الدليفري لها ما في كونفنشنال تريتمنت لها يوجوالي آه غالبا المرضى مع الكونفنشنال آه اورال ميديكيشن آه لهم بشكل البين تبعهم لاست ريزولت لها انك تعمل ديسربشن للسنسيف يوبس كثير ادفايزبل مش كثير بينفيشال شكرا لك دكتور لا اكيد طبعا اهلا وسهلا سؤال ثاني حدا ثاني تمام امورنا هي عافية عمركم، الأسبوع الجاي إن شاء الله حيكون موضوعين عندنا، الموضوع الأول اللي هو النيد ديس أوردرز والموضوع الثاني الجيت ديس أوردرز. إن شاء الله خير بركة، بنرتبها من هون